Welcome back to eLink, HVI's remote operation and report generation software suite. In our part one video, we reviewed how to install and configure the eLink software, drivers, and XB stick. In this part two video, we'll review how to set up and run a VLF test remotely and how to create testing profiles and sequences. Part four. Setting up a VLF test with eLink. To set up a VLF test, first, move over to the bottom of the test file window and begin specifying the parameters for your VLF test. You'll first need to select a type of waveform, sine, square, or one of the two DC options. We'll choose sine wave. Next, set a frequency for the test ranging from 0.1 Hz to 0.01 Hz. For our VLF test, we'll choose 0.1 Hz. The next parameter to select is the fault detection response. Overload on ARC is the typical and default choice. But depending on the testing situation, there is an option to choose Burn on ARC for fault conditioning. Finally, Choose the number of steps for the VLF test, the voltages to apply for each step, and the duration per step. Please note, the default measurement for voltage is expressed in peak voltage. If you need to specify voltages in root mean squared, be sure to check the RMS box above the voltage selectors. For our VLF test, we'll select RMS voltage. If you don't need all five steps for the test, simply leave the additional steps with a duration of zero. Begin the test by clicking the Start button in the upper right of the oscilloscope window. A 10-second countdown starts as a safety provision. The quadrant is colored yellow at this time. Operators must click on Start a second time within those 10 seconds to initiate the VLF test. Once the Start button has been clicked the second time, the test now begins. The quadrant color changes to red, and the various windows will start to populate with data after the first complete cycle. There are five different radio buttons for different graphs to view in the logging display quadrant. You can choose between four different tan delta radio buttons, or an option for voltage and current versus time. Please note, if you are not using a TAN Delta bridge connected to the VLF E-Series, only the fifth graph is going to display meaningful data. The operation of a TAN Delta bridge will be covered in another video. Just as the logging display screen replaces the HVI logo when a test begins, the status window is replaced as well with a test statistics screen. Here, a table begins to display the moving average for voltage, current, and the other metrics being logged. If a tan delta test is being performed, you will also find the standard deviation for a tan delta for each step. Congratulations! You are now running a VLF test remotely with the eLink software. As VLF tests can take up to over an hour, you now have some free time to append some additional test data in the circuit information screen and whatever information is relevant and helpful for future reports. Now that we've covered how to remotely run a VLF test, let's review some test naming conventions and saving test files. Part 5. Test Naming Conventions eLink software uses a standardized file naming convention based on the date and time and names all saved tests along this convention until a user renames them with a name of their own choosing. Default file names are year plus month plus day plus hour plus minute plus second and n in a .hvc file extension. For example, the name of a test run on the 1st of January 2022 at 2.30 p.m. would be 
.hvc. The files are stored within a default folder created during installation. You can view the designated folder location by opening the eLink software and clicking on the Settings button. Under Settings, the first tab is for Folders. The default folder path for saved files is shown there, but can be changed and or renamed later. This default folder is also where any profiles or sequences created are saved to. We'll review the differences between a test, profile, or sequence in the next section. Part 6 Tests, Profiles, and Sequences the differences between tests, profiles, and sequences remains the same for eLink users as those who operate the E-Series VLF in standalone mode, directly from the front panel. A test is a file that contains all the data from an actual performed test. Tests are specific to a date and time and contain data on the voltage, current, and when used in conjunction with a TAN Delta bridge, the loss angle for a specific device under test. Tests will also include parameter data that reflects the overall test setup. This includes the number of steps in the test, their respective voltages, the setup durations, the test frequency, the arc detection response, and the output type, sine, square wave, or one of two DC wave options. The collective parameters of the test we just listed are also known as a profile. A profile designates the various required parameters for the test, in addition to any optional ID information. You can think of a profile as a test setup without any actual data appended to it. Finally, a sequence consists of multiple test profiles that are arranged in a particular order. This is helpful where multiple testing standards need to be run on a singular cable or when cable testing requires more than five voltage steps. Let's go ahead and set up a sample profile and then a sequence. To create a profile from the main eLink screen, click on the Profiles button to open up the profile screen. You'll see in the upper left windows a directory and file structure. When navigating through folders for profiles, you will see the files end with a .hvt file extension, different than the .hvc file extension for saved tests. To create a new profile, click on the New button at the bottom of the screen, and then when the profile name prompt appears, enter the name of the profile and click OK. You should now see the profile name and file paths populate in the upper right window. Immediately below the profile name fields, define the parameters of the testing profile. The profile will auto-update as you move along. If you wish, you can add in additional information about the profile within the optional circuit ID fields at the bottom of the screen. If you have an existing profile you want to modify or rename, you can do that too. Simply find the profile in your directory window and then in the upper right window, click on Rename. Provide the new profile name and then edit the rest of the parameters and fields as you see fit. Now that we've shown you how to create a profile, we'll review how to create a sequence from multiple profiles. To create or edit a sequence from the main screen, Click on the Sequences button to open up the Sequences screen. You'll see a screen slightly similar as before, with the directory and file windows in the upper left and the testing parameters in the upper right. Unique to the Sequences screen are the Profile Selector and Sequencing windows at the bottom left and right of your screen, respectively. To create a new sequence, click on the New button in the upper left window and when the prompt appears, enter the name of the sequence and click OK. Then, use the Profile Selector screen in the bottom left window to find the first profile used in your sequence. The checkbox next to the profile name will indicate which profile is currently selected. In the Sequencing window directly to the right, 
Click on the Add Profile button. You will now see the selected profile populate into the sequencing window, and the parameters for that specific profile will populate into the parameter fields in the upper right window. Verify that the profile parameters are accurate and then navigate to your second profile for the sequence in the Profile Selector window. Click Add Profile again, and the second profile will now populate into the sequencing window. Add additional profiles as you need until you have all the necessary profiles for the sequence. Finally, arrange the profiles in the required order, using the Move Profile Up or Move Profile Down buttons. If you need to remove an errant profile from your sequence, click on the Remove Profile button. Continue to add and arrange profiles until your sequence is accurate. Like profiles, the software will auto-update your sequence information as you provide and edit it. Sequences are saved in your specific directory with the .hvt file extension, just like profiles. This concludes the eLink Software Part 2 video. In our next video in the eLink Software video series, we'll show how to view completed test results, how to move files between your laptop and the VLF front panel, and how to generate reports.